Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how sparkly those buttons are. <laughs> Phase one of the Christmas jewelry workshop begins, folks. Woohoo! I'm pulling out all of the bags that I'm going to package up little kits that we're going to be making with the button bracelets and some earrings. So I've got some little Christmassy themed bags from the Dollar Tree. These are little treat bags and they're not the Ziploc bags. I thought they were, but they still have a little drawstring here. So you can still close these up. I really like to put my beading kits though in, in Ziploc bags, similar to these here. But I got a penguin, I got a reindeer. How cute is that? A Santa Claus. You can see him better on this side, I guess. A snowman. I'll probably put like the earrings in the Ziploc bags. So this is a kind of a red and white candy cane stripe looking bag. And then this one has some snowflakes on them. I got these two at Michael's. And then I got some of these really nice I believe they're five by seven. They're the organza bags and they're red and green for Christmas. Yeah. Once I get the individual kits packaged up in the little plastic bags, I will put them both inside the, the pretty organza bag here. And it just makes an extra special little touch for my students. Look upon the sparkly goodness here, everybody. I've got a lot of Christmas themed charms. These little holly angels are really cute. I've got the 12 days of Christmas charms here, but I've only got, looks like eight of them. I have yet to figure out what the other three days of Christmas are, so I'm gonna have to go back and refresh my memory on the song so I know what charm is what. Got some that are multicolored in the reds and greens that say Merry, Joy, Peace, and Noel. I have some that are like little candies, little gingerbread houses, little donuts. These say Happy Holidays. And that say Merry Christmas. This is another one here that says Merry Christmas. This says Merry Christmas and it has a little rhinestone there on the heart. And then I have some little peppermint themed buttons that I'm going to mix in the kit with these lovely Christmas colored buttons in red, white, and green. I also purchased some wooden Christmas trees that I'm gonna mix in there for anybody that wants to have something extra special on their bracelet. And I got some glittery red, white, and green buttons. I got these, these packages of buttons I got at Oriental Trading. I got these little packages online through joannes.com. They have 75 buttons, but these are ultra tiny. They look like little pieces of Skittles. That's how small they are. <laughs> and then from my previous year's worth of stashes, I've got some Christmas colored jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> and then I believe this came from my cousin who uh, periodically she goes and gets rid of all of her craft stash and gives me all the beading materials. And they come in a lot of different colors. There's some pinks and blues and purples in there too. I think that's pretty cool. The goal is to make a button bracelet with uh, buttons be the dangly charms on them using chain, which I've got some silver chain here. And you're gonna need some 24 gauge wire in order to do the earrings with some buttons and seed beads, which I have here. These are some six aught seed beads in red, white, and green that I have. I'll probably use the red in the seed beads and the green buttons. I'm just making a hodgepodge here and then phase two will be getting the greeting cards together because we're going to be making the jewelry but we're also going to be making a Christmas card out of buttons using some scrapbooking and layering techniques and stamping let's get started alright so the first thing we need to do on uh, making a bracelet is to measure out seven inches of chain. You want to keep in mind that your clasp, which in this case we're going to be using a lobster style clasp, 
as well as the split ring that the clasp will attach to. The split ring is like a double loop instead of your regular jump ring like this one here. This split ring is more secure. This is a, I believe this is a 9 or a 10 millimeter size split ring. That will add about another 3 fourths of an inch to your bracelet. So if you want a 7 and a half inch bracelet, you could do your chain here at 6 and 3 fourths inch bracelet. That way by the time that you add your clasp, and the split ring you're going to get about seven and a half inches and these chain links are really easy to take apart because they're not solid so you just need to find which end opens up and then you're going to open it up just like a jump ring so I'm going to do the movement with my right hand and I'm going to hold everything stationary with my left hand this is the flat nose pliers here on the left and then I'm using the bent nose pliers on the right. So I'm going to open the door by either pushing the right hand plier away from myself or pulling it towards myself and I usually like to just push it away from myself. Now I've got that open. I'm going to take that off the link. Now before I close this link back I'm going to go ahead and put my split ring on because there's no point of opening it twice. I'm going to pop that onto that chain link and then I'm going to hold with my left and I'm going to do the movement with my right and this time I, in order to close the door since I pushed it away from myself I'm going to pull it back towards myself and then just in the, in the process of doing that that's lining it back up. Okay and then if you feel like you need to give it a little squeeze right there so that you don't have any kind of gap but you don't want to distort the, ch the chain link shape. Okay so there is the split ring part of my bracelet and now I just need to add my clasp and before I do anything permanent I want to double check that my clasp is working. Sometimes you might, if you get those that are coated in a, like a metal color, sometimes this little area right here is coated shut. So all you have to do in order to fix something like that is just take your bent nose pliers and right there where this little trigger mechanism is, you can just kind of pull it down. Mine had no problem opening. This is a silver clasp. Sometimes you might get some clasps that are a little uncooperative. And if you can't get your clasp open, then you're just going to have to count that as a loss and go get a different clasp. I'm stationary on the left, moving it with my right. So I've just opened that and I'm going to pop on my clasp because it does work and I'm just going to pop it directly onto the link. If you wanted to you could take a larger jump ring and do that but I don't see the point since this is a chain link bracelet and close the door. Now mine didn't close the way it should so I'm just going to kind of wiggle it until it gets close together and then giving it a squeeze. This is just a nice little chain bracelet. You can just wear that alone if you want to. But what we're doing is we're going to make charms out of buttons using some large jump rings and some regular size jump rings depending on the sizes of the buttons. The larger buttons will need a larger jump ring and sometimes you might even need to get a um, large piece of wire. See how far down that is? This jump ring, even though it's the large jump ring, is not going to be able to go through that hole plus clear this much button in order to grab hold of the chain. If I wanted to use a button this big then I could use some 24 gauge wire cut off about two inches and feed that through the hole, give it a twist and then make a little loop, sort of like a little bale. Now I just gotta figure out what all I want to put on my bracelet. Okay, so now I'm just going to open up my jump rings, same way that I opened up the chain link. The left hand is going to stay stationary, the right hand is going to do the movement. I just open that up. And I've grabbed a hold of this little jingle bell right here. And I'm going to put the jingle bell right here on the very end of this bracelet. And grab hold of this little red button. This red button's teeny tiny. 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go about every two lengths. You can make this a charm bracelet as thick with buttons and charms as you want to. I'm going to kind of take it easy on that. Not everybody likes chunky bracelets. So I'm going to go every two links and put a button on, except for these large buttons here where I might need to space them out a little bit more, just contingent upon the size. The regular size jump rings will fit these small buttons very nicely. And because this is a button charm bracelet, it really doesn't matter which way is front facing because you're going to see everything from all sides. The only time that that's really going to make a big difference is whenever we're talking about the charms like here that say Merry Christmas and it's blank on the back sides. Okay, now this regular size jump ring is going to be too small for this medium. It's, nah, it's not really medium. It's still a small size button. However, it's going to need a large jump ring. Sometimes you might even need to open these excessively wide just so that you can get all the way through the buttonhole. And this is two. getting some little buttons and things added on there. So now this is a really big button and I'm going to go up a, a size. So this is I believe a 12 millimeter size jump ring and if you run out of these large jump rings when you're doing a project like this just get your wire and make your own. Uh, I would suggest using a 20 gauge wire though if you're going to do that. I'm going to continue to put these jump rings onto the buttons and putting the buttons onto the bracelet until I fill it up sufficiently. And once I get that done, we'll go on to making the earrings. This particular bracelet here, I wound up using 15 buttons, one silver bell, and one Merry Christmas charm. So you can make this however you want to. And then we've got some earrings here using buttons and chain as well and I added a couple of little bells onto this and then here are my little Christmas trees with the buttons so that's the jewelry workshop for Christmas bags that you see down here are what the students are going to get that contains their little kits and everything with a few extra little goodies. I'm going to be making the bracelet and either the button dangle or the button Christmas tree earrings. Depends on what they want to do. Oh, oh, oh! Have a sparkle at Christmas, y'all. Bye!